Okay, we are recording, Bruce, for How Does This Make Sense? And um, what on earth are you afraid of? So <laughs> what are you afraid of, Bruce? <laughs> or what are we all afraid of? The list is long. Yeah. But, you know, uh, in anticipation of this, I looked up the word fear. And it said an unpleasant, often strong emotion caused by anticipation or awareness of danger. And I was thinking of, you know, what is the quintessential ad that popped into my head when I thought about that? And I thought about Michelin tires huh. and how a lot riding on your tire. Yeah. You know, and the automotive industry, and then all of a sudden it's the automotive industry. You start thinking about how often they actually sell with fear, but it's not much of a motivator unless you provide a solution. So the fear is there's a lot riding on your tires, you know, your family can die. And then you put little kids in tires that are nice and safe and laughing and smiling. And the message is clear. Michelin's the solution. Yeah. So I, this idea of uh, fear is a motivator, fear is a marketing tool, fear is a sales tool. It's great. But you can't go in and yell at your sales force and say, you need to sell more without giving them the tools to sell. Otherwise, you just paralyze them. Yeah. I mean, fear can be a great short-term motivator, but as a long-term motivator, if you're not providing a happy solution, it's not a motivator at all at the end of the day. Uh, it's a great point. And, you know, it's funny. <laughs> Goodness, I uh, remember that. You know, you're not initially entire commercials about 25 years old now that you mentioned, but but mm -hmm. I remember, and I even can include it in the, the workshops that I do. Um, and and it was able to align that notion of fear with good parenting. You know, I'm a good parent, so I'm going to protect my kids. And I even remember reading about uh, fathers writing to Michelin saying they were going to make sure their college kids had Michelin tires and all, all that kind of you know interesting stuff. But you know, I, I'm, I kind of think that, you know, old habits die hard. Uh, and uh, I, I've never been able to fully understand or comprehend, you know, why there's always this reliance of fear, especially when you said on the sales process. Um, I recently went and leased another car. And I kind of went through a couple of other dealers first. And and it was it's the same tactics that we've been used to over and over again, which is he wasn't putting fear into me, but you knew that sales rep had a lot of fear thrown into him right? Uh, by the aggression that was there. Um, and maybe they didn't utilize fear, but they utilize a sense of, uh, can't you make a decision quick or this, this is, or this car is going to be away. If someone else is going to grab this quick while well, you look out in the lot and you see there's, you know, about 20,000, uh, 20,000 Toyota RAV fours out there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so there's, there's plenty of them, you know? Um, yet when I did end up leasing, it was, uh, I ended up with a Subaru and the dealership was very different. And yet there's, there's two, there's two dealerships near us. Uh, not actually one's near us and one's not that near. And I went to the one not near us because the one near us is notorious for that same kind of behavior. And the one that's about 15 miles away is a smaller dealership, but yet highly successful and really um, partners with you more, treats you like a real human, no real pressure, um, and kind of acknowledges that you're buying a car, which is kind of a special thing you want to do, you know? Right. Um, and so I guess what I'm trying to say is I don't get why, why a lot of the companies and businesses don't get it with regards to the limitations of fear. Well, invoke, because invoking fear is a very it's as powerful emo an emotion as there is. And, you know, uh, it, 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 listen, presidential elections going back um, well before my time, but uh, there's a very famous TV commercial that sunk, that they say sunk Barry Goldwater. And that was you know, a girl holding a little flower and then a mushroom cloud from a nuclear weapon. Right. Because uh, he was, uh, you know, perceived as a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit erratic. 
Yeah. That was a potential. At that time, new, fear of nuclear war was very real. Right. You know? Now we have other things to fear. <laughs> you know? uh, yeah, I mean, you know, but, it, it, it's like <laughs> the business part is one thing, but uh, we're overwhelmed with it. We're overwhelmed with whether it's fear of disease. Uh, you know, we're in the middle of, it can't help but, but get into it a little bit in terms of uh, the fear that people have over, over elections, and this one in particular. And what's really scary, <laughs> talk about fear, is suddenly now there's inabilities for people to actually sit back and really think about what are you really afraid of and who are you afraid of? Why, why are you afraid of it? And what's the worst that can happen? Right. And, and then compartmentalize to say that you can pick whatever side, that other side, you know, those are bad people or they want a Nazi takeover or the others, they want a communist takeover. You know, it's almost like a cancer that then becomes uh, manifest, uh, you know, throughout the entire society in essence. And often there's an often lack of ability to kind of really look inward uh, related to yourself and say, what can you really do about it? And it's getting exacerbated because we're isolated. We, you know, even with a little bit of going out, we're still pretty much isolated. And our only connections are through these dopey networks, uh, through Facebook and Twitter and the rest, where all we're doing is uh, feeding our own fears in many ways. Right. And, well, and the and the anecdote or the antidote, antidote to fear, antidote, antidote to fear, uh, to me, is joy and positive emotions and uh, love and happiness. So you go in and you look at that and you say, I, I'm struck by, uh, and again. I was a little kid, but there's a very famous Coca-Cola commercial. And, you know, uh, I, I think it's called The Tree on the Hill, where all those people of all different... Oh, the Teach the World to Sing? Yes, Teach the World to Sing in Perfect Harmony. Da, yeah. da, da. Um, that particular commercial, when you think about when that ran and when that was introduced, you know, it was the last time that we had tremendous civil unrest and, uh, you know, war anti-Vietnam, war protesters. And, you know, while the Civil Rights Act had passed, implementation was nowhere near moving forward. And, you know, you had real chaos and real fear in the country. But yet, that's the commercial that has seemingly stood the test of time. And people talk about, well, 20, 30, and now we're talking about it. It's gotta be 45 years after the fact, 50 years after the fact. Um, what was, I think that commercial was 72. Might've been 72, early 70s at least. Um, uh, yeah, and the people still talk about it and they should rerun it now perhaps. Right, I, I don't think. But it brings up a, a, a marketing challenge. While fear is a great selling tool, once you overwhelm people, they don't make a decision. You were talking about, you went to multiple dealerships. It's inevitable when fear and anxiety, if, if the solution isn't easy, or is the solution isn't something you're ready to do, what it causes is largely paralysis and you start the process over. That's brilliant. So, you know, so if you're looking to get somebody to buy your, or try your products, well, fear can be a great motivator as long as you provide it as part of the solution. It also has to be credibly part of the solution. You know, I, I, I love the idea of uh, safe glass and the auto replacing your windshield while you're at your kid's volleyball game or while you're doing this or they come to your house, it's all safe. And they just replace your windshield and you get a picture and the guy's in the mask. And I, I mean, that's a clear example of using what could happen, your windshield shattering, you not being able to see out of it. It's only gonna get worse, get it fixed now type of thing yeah. to, 
and providing a solution. Um, you know, uh, I, one of the most memorable commercials I can think of about fear was the, uh, the egg on the pan. This is your brain on drugs. You know, uh, America iconic for them. Iconic. Yeah. Yep. Um, but it really didn't provide a solution. It was very memorable. Um, and it certainly, but I, and I know, uh, having talked to some people years later that were involved in that, that it was hugely successful. I don't know if a lot of people stopped using drugs because they saw that commercial. Well, I would say by the increase of the use of those drugs, I would suspect that it actually <laughs> didn't have much at all. I've actually can we spoke a little bit because, uh, you know, way back during the Reagan administration, you know, Nancy Reagan had this just say no to drugs and all the kids said, no, I'll just say yes to them, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and then uh, sometimes, uh, you know, we, we, we try to almost overly uh, manage people, but you said something really interesting. And I wrote this down, the whole notion of anxiety. And, um, you know, maybe, maybe my, my little car buying experience that I had here, it d does illustrate it because the Toyota dealer, I could have bought there because I didn't want to be spending any more time than I needed to when dealing with car cars or anything else. And Subaru wasn't even that much in my head. Um, and I figured, okay, I'm going to go lease the, the RAV4. It's a great, good car. It's got good reputation, all that kind of stuff. But they gave me anxiety. And, and part of it was, I don't like anybody making me feel like what's wrong with it. I can't take, that I can't, uh, I did everything for you. Why can't you make this decision right now? Well, that all of a sudden it's like, well, wait a minute. If I went ahead and made that decision, I would feel as if I got cheated or, or, you know, I caved, you know, and then I decided, let me take a ride and go to this. Cause I always was a little bit interested Guy spent a lot of time, had no anxiety, did all that. So I think, you know, that, that's kind of the key with marketing. And I think especially now, because we're riddled with anxiety, riddled with it for all different reasons, whether it's health, it's political stuff, or all things are going on in your own personal life and families, you're riddled with it. And I think the very least, at the very least, what marketers could do is to figure out how in that little moment that I'm dealing with you, can I really... Um, eliminate that anxiety and be kind of a pleasant moment in your life as opposed to contributing to all this stuff. Right. With something as simple as a salesman pushing you for, to do something that you're not ready for, or, you know, in order to buy this product, you need to be, uh, have a certain belief system, <laughs> you know, it's, yeah, I think, you know, in, in listening to you, I think, um, Cheerios actually does a great job with that, tamping down the anxiety. You know, they talk about heart health, but they have this simple solution. You know, listen, you're going to eat breakfast anyway. Why not have Cheerios? Yeah. You know, your you know your kids love it. You you loved it when you were a kid. Come back and have it again. You know, as an adult. Uh, it, I know it's. The brand itself is doing very well and has for a very long time. But I think that's very smart marketing. It is. It's using fear, but it's providing a solution and it's easy. So it tamps down that anxiety. Yeah. No, it does. That's great. And uh, well, speaking of fear, I'm afraid our time is up. <laughs> anyway, Perfect. More, more, uh, more next week. Have a great one. You too. Bye now. Bye-bye.